listening to The Cooler Ring, a podcast made for manufacturing marketers. Here are Carmen Perry and Jeff White. Welcome to The Cooler Ring, a podcast for manufacturing marketers brought to you by Cooler Partners. My name is Jeff White and joining me today is Carmen Perry. Carmen, how are you doing, sir? You know, I'm uh, I'm feeling rather resourceful, Jeff. I think people that are listening to this need to understand the where we're at here uh, in the uh, Cooler Ring World Headquarters. Um mm. You know, it's towards the end of January as we're recording this, and so really all of the Christmas provisions that got sent by kind people in nice boxes have all been consumed, and we're now at the very, like, we're down to the very last bit, so uh, I'm, I'm running on dill pickle peanuts, which I don't know that I even knew they existed until getting this particular Christmas box out of South Carolina. Um, um, but I think it's just reflective of where we're at. Yeah, there, there's some biscuits, but they're suspect. Yeah, there's some biscuits. I, I don't, I don't know that I'd go there right now. Um, but uh, you know, it is, it is lunchtime in Nova Scotia for sure. But uh, joining us today on the Cooler Ring is Sherry Chapman. Sherry is the VP of Marketing at Forterra. Welcome to the Cooler Ring, Sherry. Hi. Thanks a lot. Uh... I'm really interested in diving into everybody's uh, last bits of uh, Christmas food in their world. I think that's a it's a very interesting conversation, actually. There's a whole other podcast genre out there for that that is not this. Man, the biscuit comment just caught me funny for whatever reason. So anyway, we're off to a good start. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's never bad. So Sherry, tell us about uh, what you're up to at Forterra and uh, what your background is. Oh, thank you, and i um, excited to be um, on the podcast. Uh, so, yeah, working at uh, Forterra. Uh, briefly, Forterra is a material technology company that has created a way to um, mineralize uh, CO2 from cement producers' kilns and create a green cement product. And uh, early stage startup pre-revenue and we're really on the journey um, from a marketing side um, of you know educating the world on green cement and uh, why our solution, why the solution at Forterra um, is, is a path that we think is important. Um, one thing to note in, in this space, uh, we need lots of players, we need lots of solutions, uh, global CO2 um, greenhouse gases from the cement production is about 8% of global greenhouse gases and so we need a lot of solutions um, but we're we're really excited about what what we have and you know where we're playing in the game um, for my background i've i've been working in different variations of manufacturing and hardware for my whole career started um, really with consumer electronics um, you know hard goods tvs you know uh, displays uh, RAM, memory chips, uh, laptops, all those, you know, kind of hard goods um, in the CE space and um, really understand manufacturing, um, really taking a concept and an idea and a, a market position and then bringing it to to the market, whether it's to the consumers or to businesses. And um, just landed at Forterra and just with an amazing opportunity. When I, when I tell you this is a once in a lifetime um, project and uh, pretty much pinch, my, pinch myself every day that uh, I get to work on this. I mean, it's an incredible challenge too, because of course you're, you know, you're really building a category, aren't you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's something I, when I looked at Forterra, and, and what we have, um, and really the white space, right? As a marketer, you're, you're looking at, not only you're looking at the industry, but you're also looking at what, what can you occupy? What can you fill? Where can you distinguish yourself from, from the market? And early on, um, because of where we are, and we can have a whole other podcast on um, the journey of Forterra, but... Um, when you think about this uh, category of green cement um, and who, who really owns it who, and who has a product that is near term ready for launch. And when I look at where we, we sit, um, we, we've got a pretty good case of having um, a product that can, what I say, you know, what I call, you know, could be the Kleenex 
of green cement, um, we could define this category. And it's very exciting. Um, I, and I guess bringing in the consumer electronics world um, from really the very beginning of my career, um, dating myself at CompUSA and, you know, launching personal computers and, and really, you know, trying to educate consumers why you need this big box on your on your desk and on your, your table to really enjoy all the things that the internet has to offer in, in personal computers, um, to why green cement and why why React is. And so I think my my you know my history in consumer electronics with new technology and positioning has really helped um, at Forterra and, and how we position our, our product line react um, in the green cement category and how, how we elevate it and own it. How does, um, yeah, we must talk about that because, I mean, of course, sometimes there's a gift of having a competition in an existing market because there's already a bunch of people already talking about what it is you sell. And then, of course, you can talk about how you might be a bit unique or different or something that you, your solution does that somebody else's doesn't, and then they're off to the races. In this instance, um, you know, you're kind of having to start the conversation from scratch or at least redirect it in some way. I, I, I have to think that at least puts um, a, a higher uh, premium on PR in your marketing mix. I would assume that it's maybe one um, uh, change as a result of that. Is, is anything else jump out or maybe I'm wrong with my PR commentary too? I don't you know. Um, first of all, I'm very much a believer in competition. Um, and that you have to create a category and you need players in that category. Um, very hard to be, um, you know, to, to, to just be one solution in a category. And, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of companies that are in the space, um, a lot of startups that are in the space who are offering um, products in the, you know, in, in the category of green cement. In fact, we're part of a consortium called uh, DC2 where you know we we have a group that um you know as as startups in this space we work together especially on policy and lobbying um but when when we look at you know who is going to um, lead this category uh, i really want to position react as that um, but i i do we, we do want a lot of players in the space again we need a lot of solutions um, there's not going to be one band-aid for our our uh, greenhouse uh, gas uh, issues that we have um, in the climate um, space. And, you know, education's huge and PR, and, and it, we could do, again, a whole podcast on PR and how PR has evolved and really what PR means. And it's, it's um, multi-layer, right? Um, for us, our, our agency, yes, uh, we've got, you know, the mes messaging and, you know, press releases, but we're also finding our PR partners, great content producers. Uh, we do a lot with LinkedIn, um, and that I've rolled our LinkedIn social strategy as part of our, our PR engagement as well, because the, the messaging is, is very similar. Um, a lot of what we do on the content side could um, you know, be elevated to a release, but then also a lot of releases, if you really look at them, really are just bite-sized pieces of interesting content that we can we can push out to um, our LinkedIn audience. So yes, I would say PR is a very, very um, important aspect, um, just because of the education that we need to do around uh, the space. You also have the the unique challenge that not a lot of marketers, except maybe those, I mean, it's, it's interesting, you, you see this in kind of in the startup community, and you also sort of see it in the publicly traded side of things where marketing may have a role, not just in marketing the product and working with sales, but also in investor relations. And when you're in that kind of startup mode, you know, how are you choosing to talk to the to the venture capital community and the, the clean tech community, maybe in a way that you aren't necessarily talking to the potential customer and client base? I think it's an important distinction too, Jeff, because we've had lots of people on the podcast talking about messaging, about sustainability and whatnot, and talk, bring sustainability messaging into their category. But I don't think any of them feel like they're having to talk out of both sides of their mouth or to two different audiences. They're mostly just changing how they talk to, to their customers. Um, but in this instance, you've got 
I'm just imagining these clean tech investors versus um, the concrete or cement industry and kind of those two people don't look like they go to the same parties. <laughs> uh, no, it's, 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 it's a really good point. And um, I'll, I'll say, you know, our, our CEO, um, Ryan, he, we're, we're a very transparent company, extremely transparent. And what helps us in the, the concrete I love cement industry is our transparency and how we speak to them and that we want to work with them. And so that allows us, that, that level of transparency gives us, um, I, I'm not gonna say leeway, but they realize that we are their partner and we wanna bring them along on our green journey, our green cement journey. So as we're taking them on our green cement journey, that's really where we meet the investor community and the climate tech community. Um, we, in, in no way do we, do we ever message out um, about, um, you know, the demise of the cement industry. In fact, one of our taglines is, you know, um, uh, concrete create, cement creates civilization. It's, it's huge. It's, it's why we are. Cement is the reason why we are who we are today. If you, you know, if, if you just look at the past as, as we've developed in cities and um, as a culture, it's because of cement. So we partner with that industry. And because we've been so transparent, then when we speak to the press, when we talk about what we do, what we're doing, the cement industry is not feeling that we're an adversary. They know that we're bringing them along with us because our success is their success. And they, and you know, the industry knows, and you know, this was amazing feedback from World of Concrete. The, the, the industry knows and the value chain knows that they, these types of solutions need to happen. So uh, we very much, and the executive team at Forterra very much ensured that the cement industry, concrete industry, construction industry knew that we were on their side. So then when we can go out and talk to the investors and talk to climate tech, they know that we're bringing them with them instead of leaving them behind, if, if that makes sense. It does make sense and it, it, because I think it, it feels to me that you're avoiding what is sometimes a bit of a common trap, it seems, of, of kind of sounding a little holier than thou and you're the one bringing the more environmentally driven solution to an industry that may not have a big you know may not have a great environmental reputation um you know and, and it sounds like you're really taking the approach of like almost like we're, we're gonna make change from the inside we're not it's not about kind of imposing change from the outside that's you you nailed it that's exactly what our strategy is um again we utilize the cement um, partners CO2. Um, they're, you know, there's CO2 from their kiln and we, that's, that is part of our feedstock. Um, so we are utilizing them and we're giving them a new solution for um, their customer base. Uh, because we partner so far up um, the value chain in the cement world, we're working directly with the cement partner and we're, providing them a solution, a green cement solution that they can then offer. And so, you know, we, we'll have, we have agreements with cement partners, but then also um, the ready mix, which is, you know, you're getting a little bit further down the chain, but we're very much at the cement producer level. Uh, so yeah, we are working inside. And, and that was part of really the strategically for the executive team here. And really just the brilliance of, of this team is the cement, play, the cement producers have the whole infrastructure. They have the feedstock, they have the sales, they have distribution. Um, why would we burden such an important product with having to recreate the wheel? Um, imagine, if you will, like having to go and source your own, get, get your own query, you know, get your own, um, you know, limestone. Why not utilize the feedstocks with um, the, the cement? partners. And uh, again, it's a, a brilliant strategy for the executive team. No, very often as 
people are bringing you know more environmentally sensitive solutions to the market not always the case but often um, one of the characteristics of them is that they're more expensive how are you you know i guess is that the case or how are you navigating that component of the transition that price objection and uh you know i i can think of a number of categories where i hear the Oh, well, we'll change when the customers begin demanding it, which, of course, is a nice way of saying until the customers tell us they want to spend more money, we're going to stick with what we got. Um, it, it's a great question. We, it, it, the, the financial model that we're, we're playing with um, and always exploring is not to burden the price, um, not to charge a green premium. Now, it, it's an interesting from a marketing standpoint because we're, we're really slightly acting as um, kind of an OEM, if you will, because we'll sell directly to the cement partner and then they will resell it out. So, and, and my, one of, you know, if you're just what keeps me up at night is, you know, I lose some control in that, um, in, in, in that scenario because now the cement partner is, taking our React product and how are they then positioning it to their customers? And then how are, let's say, the ready mix customers positioning it to the architects and the construction um, industry? Uh, whereas if we, if we had a, you know, our product and we sold directly, I control that messaging more. And so that's, that's really the, the next leg of this journey is when you know our our new reading plant is up and running and you know we're actually selling the product how 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 is the market and how is how is the supply chain the value chain talking about our product and where do we need to to fine tune it but from a, an economical standpoint um we are from what we can control we're not charging a green premium now it'll be very interesting how the market um, translates, you know, potentially is, will the ready mix suppliers charge a green premium? And then what does that adoption looks like? So you, you, you lose a bit of control um, in some, you know, uh, distribution models. And it, we know from where we're sitting, we're not charging a green premium, but I have a feeling there may be a bit of that down the supply chain um, as 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 it gets uh, as as people are adding on some costs, so that that's going to be yet to you know to be seen. That's a fascinating kind of challenge, isn't it? I'm just <laughs> I was trying to navigate that discussion in my head about because of course I mean I would think you know somebody building a building for example that um, let's say thanks to their use of uh, your technology uh, they get a higher lead certification for their building. But also the story, right? Um, our story is very valuable. And, you know, we, we, we spoke to some builders last week uh, at the World of Concrete. And that, that green cement story for builders as they're building new apartments, especially this, this, these were from folks in L.A. And, you know, for their cohort, how does that resonate? Oh, this you know this building has been you know was we utilized green cement solutions. Will they get more tenants because of that? It's it's all very new. It's all very interesting, and I think it's very important as for for Terra and as marketing to keep those you know uh, those channels of communication open all the way down the supply chain um, to uh, to really understand how people are talking about it. One of the things that you that you've mentioned in this conversation, you know, you want the React product to be the Kleenex brand, that, that you're a bit of an OEM. I mean, in reality, Forterra is a bit of a, an ingredient brand, really. And, and, you know, what you're talking about right now and that story that your customers can tell their customers can tell their customers, that's pretty important you know, to be able to craft that messaging that can then be leveraged by others. You know, we're building this this uh, this high rise with the with Forterra based concrete or or whatever that happens to be, and then that has a whole story behind it and reason for being and and methodology for creating a, a premium green concrete product. Um, but it also is more difficult to communicate. 
um, than say a, a specific widget, even if that widget is is part of a, a larger component. Like it, it literally is an ingredient. So, how how are you approaching that? And, and you know, what's the the strategy for crafting that story that can be carried on by uh, by the people who are leveraging your brand to make theirs better? Well, I'm going to rapidly admit um, and. You know, as I look down at my computer and see the uh, Intel Core icon on my laptop, uh, uh, you know, it. Listen, it's you know, it's, if it's not broken, you know, don't fix it. Intel, I think, really set the bar for um, having an ingredient brand, um, ingredient solution, but then developing programs, partner programs that incentivize um, your partners to talk about you. And so that's kind of laying the foundation and, and you know, taking, taking um, some learnings, again, consumer electronics background. I was early on when uh, the Intel Inside program launched all the way back when they had the spacemen. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a fundamental tool in the toolbox is to create partner programs. And so that's something that we're starting to, to scope out. And when we do have product, what are the incentives that we can create or the partnerships that we can create to ensure that people are still talking about React and what it is that we do and we have a cohesive message. And, and that could be, um, you know, utilizing React as itself. We've got, you know, um, naming um, uh, phrases that we're putting together as well. If, if, because to understand the process, our cement um, partners uh, they may have their own product, their own green cement product that they want to promote. Um, how do we ensure that we're still in that conversation? Uh, so, yeah, a, a bit of partner program um, development, I think, is really what needs to happen to ensure that we, we stay in the conversation. I think that's going to be fascinating to watch. And um, you can tell, like, uh, just um, uh, this is one of those times when I wish it was a video podcast that so people could see. Kind of the, I could, could I, could, I could almost see like three marketers on my screen here. Kind of, we're all trying to figure. You know, nobody wants to, because we're all kind of saying the market is reckon, going to recognize some level of value, enhanced value in this end product. And of course, we want to get, we want to achieve, capture as much of that value uh, for the company as possible. It's really. Uh, interesting to see this evolve over time, whether or not the paying the green premium becomes a dirty word or not. You know, maybe people will be quite willing to pay a green premium in order to have that story. Um, and it is kind of the, I suppose in some way, that's the the challenge ahead is uh, how, how good a job we do on this Intel Inside job um, is uh, going to tell the tale about how much of a premium we can get. Yeah, and it, 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 but I think... On our end, up front, and, and it's interesting because it's, um, we, we, for Terra, I would say, we're not going into this expecting a green premium, but I believe so strongly in the message that it'll be interesting to see down, you know, the supply chain, who is able to capitalize on it. Who, who is able to capitalize? So, you know, there will be dollars added in and, and who can capitalize? I don't think Forterra will see it. We'll just see it in, in um, increased you know, supply, right? We'll see it in, in uh, people demanding our product. But it'll be interesting to see where the, the pricing pops if, if we have a good message. Uh, has some of this work also involved? I mean, are you having to basically create economic models for and, and kind of and more advanced um, uh, d discussions with these uh, with these buyers about you know how they ought to be thinking about pricing their product and uh, I guess I'm just trying to, kind of curious how, how far we've gone there. Great question. We're we're at the level of it, and again, it's um, just a little inside baseball on the cement world. It's, it's it is a very regional world. Um, it's uh, it doesn't travel well so you you want to be within a certain range of the of, of the site right um, so you you've got your regional players and so in in within that 
ecosystem of the region, you've got you know ready mix suppliers, and so um, just just briefly, you you know you've got c the cement plant which will sell directly to ready mix to make concrete, or you'll would get sell to the ready mix suppliers. So the next stage in the game is really engaging with ready mix and seeing how they will talk about it and then how they will position it. And those are conversations we're starting to have as we're, you know, we're setting up those partnerships. Um, and so, again, we're very much in the early stages. Our, our first you know, full um, commercial scale plant is set to open later um, this quarter. And then we should have the React product out um, by uh, Q2. So it's, it's a very exciting time right now, and it, there's just going to be a lot of learnings. How people, you know, how, how, and a lot of it is going to be on Forterra about on my group is how do I arm the value chain with the materials and uh, that they need, and really kind of getting them set up. And I'm very thankful in, in my career where I've worked with many layers of distribution of a product, whether I'm selling direct to the consumer or I'm selling to a retailer who needs to then sell to the consumer. You know, as, as your product goes through the gatekeepers, how do, you, how do you provide the necessary materials and messaging so they can, to, to be ensured that they're selling it the correct way? Um, and they're getting as much value out of that product as possible. I was kind of struck as you were uh, giving us that, that answer. And, uh, you know, you've, you've mentioned the brand name React a number of times. Of course, the company's name for Terra. There was a brand decision made there to have the product name differently than the company. Any insight that you can give us there? What you're thinking is for Terra on a on a path to making a wide number of uh, products that are function similar to React, et cetera? Yeah, um, great question. So, you know, we are... We're a CO2 solutions company, um, and currently, yes, we are creating a green cement solution. But uh, this, you know, this product, this, you know, um, reactive calcium carbonate that we've created, um, you know, are there other areas for that? So to, to answer your question, yes, um, creating a, a brand architecture that, that allows um, space and breathing room for other categories of product and business segments uh, and le and having Forterra as a you know a co2 solutions company and then having our different um, product categories although we are extremely laser focused on um, you know react in the green cement space and and get in kicking this off but yeah there's a lot of very very smart phds uh, and business people um, at this company who who are who are looking out um, and saying, you know, where else can we apply uh, this this science and this technology? I want to shift gears as as we wind down a little bit here because it's it's not lost on me that you know what the primary industry that you serve is uh, construction and and you know building materials and, and concrete and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, typically uh, an industry that's pretty male dominated um, in the more technology startup space is less so uh, kind of a, a industry that that certainly is a, l a little bit more inclusive one hopes but you know how are you how are you finding kind of tackling that and kind of bringing your perspective to a, an industry that isn't typically as uh, you know there aren't as many women in it uh, yep it's you know it's a great question uh, it's it's interesting my it, Working in technology, I've, I've often had this as um, a lot of times being the only woman at the table um, and in, in a situation. So I will say just from my experience, um, I've learned how to navigate that. And it's been a long career of oftentimes being the only woman in the room. Um, and But I will say with uh, the, you know, the climate tech space, and the you know construction, the cement industry, um, I've I've felt no resistance. I I I would encourage women to get into um, the engineering fields and to get into you know the cement and concrete and construction. And, and there are, um, but it's, I think it can potentially um, not be intimidating because I think women are easily intimidated. But I think you know you you just feel that maybe there's a barrier. Um, but I'll just say I've, I've 
I felt nothing but, um, uh, you know, um, being part of the, the group and, you know, really having the seat at the table. I mean, Forterra has been very open with, um, you know, bringing women in and really getting, you know, different views on, um, on, what, we, on, on what we need for the space. I, I would just encourage women to really enter the engineering fields um, and really to, to see it because there's, the diversity is needed and it's a really diversity in thinking. Um, that, that we need. And men and women um, bring different things to the table, both equally important, but, but you, need, you, need, you, know, you need different you know, thoughts and, and the way people approach things. So um, I urge women to get into the construction and cement and concrete industry. Things I say now, but it's true. Uh, <laughs> I, I would encourage it. Well, and uh, I think um, the, the clean tech space you know, I, I think you know. Sometimes it's just that some of the traditional industries, like construction or what have you, it's not like they don't. They don't we don't have women participating in those sectors. It's just that they maybe haven't always been as attractive, but uh, uh, to to them for for a variety of reasons. I think there are you know a lot of the executives that I know that are uh, excelling in marketing and clean tech are are women. Uh, so I think that there's an interesting intersection there. And and my goodness, I, you couldn't be more correct. Uh, the the industry needs their help. <laughs> you know. Yeah, there's no question about that. It's been a fascinating, fascinating conversation. Um, I, I didn't, Sherry, I've just really enjoyed uh, having you on the show. I, I, it, it occurs to me that we've probably driven some people crazy in using cement and concrete interchangeably when they're very, very different things. And uh, so uh, I'll apologize to your colleagues in advance for uh, when they listen to this. Yeah, no, it's fine. So, yeah, it's it, it is very easily, and you know, it the market didn't help by having both of them start with C's, um, it, but it 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 is very it's very much uh, a, a common 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 mistake. Uh, but you know, we we'll get there. It doesn't you know, regardless of what word you say, uh, you know, give give the green cement movement uh, a chance, and you know, and, you know, and you know, follow it. We're follow for terror. We're we're excited about what we're doing and. Thank you for your time. I've, I've really enjoyed chatting with y'all. Thank you for sharing the story. We look forward to uh, watching the growth in the coming years. It's been wonderful. Thanks. Thanks for listening to The Cooler Ring with Carmen Perry and Jeff White. Don't miss a single manufacturing marketing insight. Subscribe now at coolapartners.com slash the cooler ring. That's K-U-L-A partners.com slash the cooler ring.